Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Getting over a little cold. So, you know how everybody has that friend who's a little bit too into Halloween? <laughs> that is me. A friend who uh, spends months planning elaborate costumes, that is me. Um, I've always been really interested in dressing up, um, interested isn't the right word, really passionate about uh, costumes. And, you know, growing up, my dad was that guy who woke me and my brothers up every day. Um, of our childhood wearing uh, a wig or um, underwear on the outside of his pants, <laughs> shaving cream on his nose, you get the picture. So uh, that gives you an idea of maybe where it came from. <laughs> so I am uh, I'm living in Costa Rica one fall and uh, I am doing research there and it occurs to me one night that um, it's Halloween and I, I was so caught up in research I had no idea. And I got so excited, and I'm living with this international field crew, and I said, guys, it's Halloween, we need to celebrate. And nobody wanted to do anything. These people are from, you know, I'm the only American, they're from all over the world, and nobody cared. Nobody wanted to get dressed up. Nobody wanted to um, go out dancing. They didn't even want to eat candy. <laughs> so clearly these weren't my people. <laughs> and so I had to, I had to just rally. I threw together a straw hat, some swim goggles, and a painted on uh, mustache with eyeliner. And it was, it was pathetic, really, but I, I had to give it a go. And um, usually when I dress up, it is a male character, because I get to be a woman every day of the year. And um, it's just more fun to be a man sometimes. I've always had beard envy. Um, so, so that was that. And flash forward a few months, and I'm back in Vermont, and, um, and I have some friends come to me and say, Julie, we're going to this alter ego um, costume party next weekend. You have to come. And I think, yes, this is it. I missed Halloween. I'm finally going to make things right. And so I spent a week putting together the most amazing costume of one of my heroes, Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> and it was perfect. I had the boots and I had um, I had a, a, a list of quotes, you know, because you have to always be in character when you dress up. And I had the wig, and I had the eyeliner, and I glued on the beard perfectly. I rented a hat for the night. Um, so everything was perfect. And while my friends, um, while I'm waiting for them to pick me up, it's an hour south, and it's a sleepover party. And while I'm waiting, I needed something to help me kind of get into pirate mode. <laughs> And, and, and I'm house-sitting, and all I had was tequila. And I'm not a big drinker, but I, I had to have a drink just to help me kind of embrace being a pirate. And, um, and I think my inner pirate came out because um, I was doing shot after shot of tequila. I'm, I, that's not me. And when my friends came to pick me up, they thought the swagger, you know, my, my walk was, was part of the act. Um, so I um, proceeded to throw up the entire hour drive down to this party. And um, there was just a drunk pirate on Route 91 throwing up every few miles. We got to Northampton and we were planning to have dinner there. So everybody, my friends all get out of the car and they're not dressed in costume yet because they're normal people. <laughs> and, um, and I couldn't get out. I just had to stay in the car and keep throwing up. And uh, we get to the party. I couldn't get out. Um, I threw up all night in the car. Um, and, and people kept tiptoeing out saying, looking in the windows, and it really is the best costume. And I just, I was I swear, I just was this belligerent pirate. I was so angry, and I'd kick, and I'd spit pieces of my beard coming off. Uh, so the next morning, we have a very quiet ride back to Vermont, and I, I just was humiliated, and so, so upset that I let that happen. And, um, and so uh, I kind of went into hiding for a while. I remember not wanting to talk about it <laughs> very much. And, and then uh, uh, until a few months later, I realized Pirates of the Caribbean 2 is coming out in the theaters. <laughs> and this is my final chance. This is my last chance to make things right. And I'm so excited. So I call up all those same friends and I say, guys, 
we're going. And I put on the whole outfit, and um, they don't, they're not dressed up, because again, they're normal people. <laughs> and, um, and we get to the theater, and I say, guys, this is on me. Just, and so I kind of saunter up to the ticket booth, and I said, five tickets for pirates, you scallywag. <laughs> and this teenager, just very unimpressed, just looks at me and says, we're sold out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just, I didn't have anything left. I just, I was so, I, I had hit rock bottom, really. And, uh, my friends didn't really know what to say. They were just kind of looking at each other and, looking, and they said, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. I, I just want to go home, you guys. And they said, no, we, you're, uh, you're dressed up. We should do something. Let's just go do something. There's bowling across the street. And I said, I just want to go home. No, let's bowl. So I said, fine, let's go bowling. And we go, over, and I'm a pirate. And, and we walk in, and, and it's disco bowling. Night. And pirates don't bowl. You know, for starters, but they really don't disco bowl. <laughs> so I said, no, I just want to go home. Let's just go home. And um, and my friend Alex says, Julie, I really want to buy you a beer. Can I just buy you a beer? You have earned a beer. And I said, fine, and then let's just go home. And so we get to the bar, and I'm walking through the door, and my head is hung low. And as soon as I, cro as soon as I come through the door, I hear this, Yeah! And I look around, and the place is packed, and everybody is holding their drink up high in the sky for me. And I'm trying, and all the women are dressed like men. All the men are dressed like women, and we're trying to figure it out. We look behind us across the door in the window. It says cross-dressing night. 